There is a difference between vigorously pursuing settlement discussions and making threats that are tantamount to extortion, and some lawyers don't know the difference. Oh my god! I am Viva Fry, a Montreal litigator turned YouTuber. This is Barney. This is Pudge. And today we are breaking down the charges that have been issued against Michael Avenatti for bank and wire fraud and extortion. For those of you who don't know, Michael Avenatti was arrested on two sets of charges. One was wire fraud and bank fraud. The other was intent to commit extortion. For the purposes of this law vlog, I'm not going to talk about the wire fraud and the bank fraud except to say that the allegations apparently stem from misappropriation of client settlement funds in the order of a million and a half dollars. That is to say, settlement funds that Avenatti received for his client and never remitted to his client. The charges that are interesting for the purposes of this law vlog are extortion and intent to commit extortion extortion relating to Avenatti's dealings with Nike and Nike's lawyers. Apparently Avenatti was representing a client who was alleging misconduct on behalf of Nike employees, the same type of charges that were laid against Adidas for apparently bribing university or college sports teams or athletes or whatever. I don't know the details to it, but it doesn't really matter because what we're talking about today for this law vlog is when vigorous settlement discussions become criminal extortion. Michael Avenatti contacts Nike saying he represents a client who may have a cause of action against Nike relating to Nike's alleged misconduct. Avenatti then says, pay my client one and a half million dollars or we go public with this information. Avenatti further says, pay my client 1.5 million dollars and mandate me, Michael Avenatti, to conduct an internal investigation within Nike to look into these charges for the affordable price of 10 to 25 million dollars. Avenatti then insists on meeting with Nike representatives, Nike attorneys, says, quote, I'm not effing around. You pay this amount or I'm gonna go public on the eve of your quarterly earnings statements and wipe six billion dollars off your market cap. This is not an economics vlog, but market cap means market capitalization, which is basically the price per share multiplied by the amount of shares outstanding, which gives you the value of the company, market cap. <laughs> And the question in this is when does an attorney's vigorous pursuit of a settlement for and on behalf of their client turn into criminal extortion? Let me preface this first by saying that nothing in this video constitutes legal advice. This is for entertainment and educational purposes only. This is not a legal opinion. If you need a legal opinion, go to a lawyer. Another lawyer. In order to answer this question, we need to know what is meant by extortion in the criminal sense. Under Canadian criminal law, extortion is defined as follows. Article 346, first paragraph of the Criminal Code of Canada. Everyone commits extortion who, without reasonable justification or excuse and with intent to obtain anything by threats, accusations, menaces, or violence, induces or attempts to induce any person, whether or not he is the person threatened, accused, or menaced, or to whom violence is shown, to do anything or cause anything to be done. Now there is the law and there is case law, jurisprudence, which interprets the law. Because anybody who has ever received a lawyer's letter knows that every lawyer's letter contains a threat. If you've never received a lawyer's letter, good for you. But if you've ever received one, you know that they have a pretty standard formula. They say, I am an attorney who represents the interests of Mr. Orange. You cause certain damages to Mr. Orange through your wrongful conduct. Pay Mr. Orange a certain amount of money or Mr. Orange will sue you in court. How is that not a threat that is tantamount to extortion? The courts have said that threatening civil lawsuits against an individual is not extortion. So a lawyer can legitimately threaten to sue someone in civil courts in order to obtain a sum of money that they claim is owed to their client. When does it become criminal extortion? If someone says, pay me $100,000 or I'm gonna go to the police and say that you committed a crime. Even if you in fact committed the crime, that is criminal extortion. Threatening criminal or ethical complaints in order to obtain a civil settlement is criminal extortion. And so necessarily Necessarily, you have the two ends of the spectrum. Totally permissible is you owe my client money, pay my client the money, or we will see you in court. The other totally unacceptable end of the spectrum, you owe my client money, pay my client the money, or we're gonna file a criminal complaint against you. And then everything in between is up for the courts to interpret on a case-by-case -case basis. Where did Avenatti go wrong with all of this? As far as I'm concerned, he went wrong and very clearly wrong in two places. The first of which is he was no longer negotiating a payment only for and on behalf of his client. Avenatti did not only say you wronged my client, pay my client a million and a half dollars or we're gonna sue you. Avenatti said you wronged my client, pay my client a million and a half dollars and by the way, mandate me to conduct an internal investigation within Nike for a price of 10 to 25 million dollars or I go public with this information. 
Avenatti was not just negotiating a settlement for his client, he was negotiating a payday for himself using his client as the pretext. But the most egregious way in which Avenatti went wrong was in threatening to go forward with criminal allegations in the absence of a civil settlement. Boom. You can't do that. In the back and forth between Avenatti and Nike and the lawyers, he says, I'm not messing around, settle with me, or I'm gonna hold a press conference and blow the lid off all of this and wipe $6 billion off your market cap. And then Avenatti takes to Twitter with the following tweet. Tomorrow at 11 a.m. ET, we will be holding a press conference to disclose major high school college basketball scandal perpetrated by Nike that we have uncovered. The criminal conduct, criminal conduct, criminal conduct, reaches the highest levels of Nike and involves some of the biggest names in college basketball. This is something I have said in previous law vlogs and it's something that I'll say again and again and again. Publicly accusing anyone of alleged criminal misconduct can be deemed to be defamation. And more importantly, publicly accusing a company of criminal misconduct for failure to pay the civil settlement is criminal extortion. It is in fact a line that a lot of lawyers tread very thinly on when pursuing settlements for their clients. They say things like, we'll sue you, we'll expose all of this story, you're gonna be embarrassed in front of the courts, it's gonna cost you time and money. And some lawyers go one step further and say, you know, what you've done might have been criminal wrongdoing, suggesting that in the absence of a settlement, they're gonna go to the police. Some lawyers take it one step further and threaten the other lawyer and say, I'm gonna file an ethical complaint if we don't settle this file. That, in addition to being unethical as an attorney, is also potentially criminal extortion. What do I think is gonna happen with Avenatti? Based on the evidence I've seen, having read the criminal complaint and having seen Avenatti's subsequent tweet, it seems clear that he laid the groundwork for criminal extortion by issuing threats of going public with criminal complaints in the absence of a civil settlement, and then in fact did go public with a tweet alleging criminal misconduct. 45 minutes later, by the way, he was arrested. And another thing, like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell. I don't know if you noticed, but membership status has been enabled on my channel. Right next to the subscribe button, you see a join button. $5 a month, you can become a member and get perks and whatever, but mostly you would just do it if you like my content and want to help me continue to be able to do what I love. Back to the law vlog. Avenatti laid the groundwork for his scheme and he followed through with it when, in the absence of a civil settlement, he took to Twitter with allegations of criminal misconduct. And the ultimate takeaway from all of this, if you are a responsible, respectable attorney, you do not take business to Twitter. Twitter, period. Anybody who does it has judgment problems, period. So that's that. Don't mix settlement discussions with criminal complaints. Don't mix settlement discussions with ethical complaints. And keep your client's business off Twitter, period. Like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, know your vlog, and peace out. Boom!